All right, so uh, what we're looking at here today is a 2D array. Now, hopefully by this point you're very comfortable with arrays. But now let's look into what we might call an array of arrays. Where each element in the list, and I'm using this through initialize for list because I believe it's easier to see, whereas the array has elements that are integers, or integer array would have an elements that are integers, uh, a two-dimensional integer array would have elements that, them, that each element themselves is an array of integers, whether it be a previously declared and allocated and initialized array, or a brand new one just written out there as an initializer list itself. So uh, this one right here is a, is a, a four by three array, that if we were to go ahead and draw that, All right, Matt, if we were to draw this, we would end up with 2, 4, 3, 5, 4, 2. And I'm drawing this out because this might be a good way to think about the array itself. The array itself is a lot like a table where you have rows and columns, which I'm going to abbreviate to just C-O-L-S, columns, calls. And um, with these rows and columns, each row is one whole array and can be treated as such. And what I mean by that is, let's say that we're now printing it, and I don't think I've made the print array. We'll make that part later. But let's say um, I'm printing it right here. So when I'm traversing the array, okay, what I can do then is I can go through all the rows and all the columns, and I'll explain how I do that in just a moment, and then print out each one at a certain row and a certain column. For instance, if I were to go back up here and I were to print out the element at um, 3, 1, that would take me to row 3. And remember, just like with normal arrays, we start at index 0. So that would take me to the row, the, the row number three, which is the fourth row, this one. And I go to element zero, one. So it would take a, go right to that one. And if I were to go ahead and run that, ignoring all the rest of this, it would print out the 19, which is right there. So yeah, it's very much like the arrays you've been used to. Just now it's a group of arrays in one place. I can tell you that this is pretty much guaranteed to be one of the free response questions on the exam. And I say that based on just past year's AP, uh, free response questions that have been released. And they are, they always have a 2D array traversal. Now what does it mean to traverse a 2D array? Well, I'm going to go ahead and make a new method here. Traversing, and I'm going to do it in the example of printing. Traverse means to travel through. Just like an array, we can go through it using a for loop. Now, the way that we can uh, do that, I call it print array. Uh, the way that we can make that happen is using two for loops this time. And I'm actually going to, yeah, actually, we'll, we'll keep it as that. Two for loops. One, the outer one, which goes through the array.length, which in this case is not going to be the number of columns like in a normal array, like if we just had this array right here, ARR. You remember that that was ARR, hopefully? And if I did that one dot length, that would return three. But this, in this case, when we have a 2D array, when I do ARR 2D dot length, then that's gonna print out four. Well, that's gonna return four, anyway. Not print, but return, out, return four, because it's counting up the number of rows. In both cases, we're counting up the number of elements in that array, where in the two-dimensional array, every element is an array itself. So that's going to get the number of rows. I'll finish this up. Then the inner for loop is going to go through uh, a specific array 
So let's grab one of the elements of the array, of the two-dimensional array, which itself is an array, and get the length of that specific one. And that's how it traverses it. It goes through each row, and then goes through each column. So I'm going to go and print out, uh, print, um, and how do I want to print this? Well, I'm going to go and print this as I at J. So it's going to go to this row, this column. It'll print it out, and then it's going to have uh, tab, and that's going to be it. And then at the very, end, and then at the end of each, um, each time I printed out one full line of the array, let me go and print. I'm going to just do a, a print, print a new line. So if I were to take these print arrays off, uh, these uh, print arrays back in by taking out the um, taking out the comments, it should print out the stuff you see here, but as a table like this one. File, run. Okay, and then let's take a look right here. As you can see, that is the 2D array. Ignore this stuff down here. The stuff highlighted, don't pay attention to. The stuff that isn't highlighted, notice, that's each row. The 243, the 542, the 7910, and the 61913. And that's how we do that one. And notice how each time I get through one full row, because this one is counting up all the col is printing out each of the columns in that row, each of these things. Once it gets through one full row, we exit this loop and print out the new line to go to the next line, and then it'll go back through for that row now. Okay, so print array now works. Now works. Now I'm going to show you just changing an element. I'm going to change that value 19 to a 6 right here in code. So, and I'm going to keep both prints so that you can see the change from this one to now this one, where the 6 was once a 19. It's now just a 6. All right, moving on. Uh, traversing, yeah, we already kind of covered that. You need to have a specification of where the row is, like this. So I, I'm getting the inner for loop, make sure to have this on there, and saying the exact same thing that I said earlier. All right, next. Calling one whole array. By that I mean, just printing out um, just one of the rows here, and I'll put in a, put a comma so you can know which which one I'm printing right there, right here. So just calling one of the arrays themselves, just as an array, I can change this stuff around. So just call one of the rows in particular. This, for instance, would be calling the last row. And that's just a little bit of playing around with the arrays themselves. I think everything from here up you should probably understand, because it really is just the traversing. Traversing is half the battle of anything you're doing with a 2D array. You may also see some fun things, like printing diagonally, but uh, we'll see that a bit later. Uh, I might have... We'll have that happen not as a lab. Originally, that's my plan, but we're going to do it instead more as almost like just a, kind of a mini lab. You, you'll see. We'll be just practicing some FRQ kind of stuff. All right. Uh, you'll also see, since you know I goes through you know, in, 2D, in the 2D traversal, the I goes to the rows and the J goes to the columns. You also oftentimes people will change, see people change those to row and column. That's just changing the name of the integer that loops through it. And that just makes it a little easier to understand what's happening. So then when you're looking at it and you don't have a moment where you're like, okay, system dot out dot print R 2D. And then you're like, oh wait, was I rows and J columns or was it that and that? It just makes it easier to see row, column. You know, it makes it more clear what's what. Additionally, you might also see them change it from column to just col call because then they're the same size. And then if you're doing something like changing the rows and the columns, you know, like row, call, this is just an example of something that you might do. Something like that.
probably some kind of swap. And allows you to go and have them all neatly written underneath there. And basically end in the same place. It, it just looks a little nicer. All right, uh, but you don't have to worry about that swap right there. And I think this one might not really work all that well since it's rectangular instead of square. Uh, all right, so I just want to say about that. Um, no, we'll just move on to the strings. All right, when we work with the 2D array with strings, it's basically the same idea. Just the one thing I wanted to talk about was uh, sequential search with it. Searching through the whole thing, through the rows and the columns, all the stuff you remember, making sure to get the inner loop going through the uh, row itself. And then I'm um, using a boolean to see if we can find a certain clothing item in this whole wardrobe. And of course, you can't do the two equal signs. You have to do dot equals ignore case with whatever query you're searching for. And that's just because it's a string. Whereas if this were the array 2D, and you had ARR2D at row at column equals equals query, you know, some number query, then you found it. In this case, we have to say, okay, no, if it's dot equals ignore case because, again, it's a string. So let's say this, uh, let's make this thing look, uh, work. Right now it just says it doesn't found it, hasn't found it because well, there's nothing there. But let's say we're looking through this uh, rather extensive wardrobe here. And I was looking for, let me find a black long sleeve shirt today. And I'd be looking through there and see, okay, did I, did I find the black long sleeve shirt? Yes, I did. Next, if I were looking through uh, just the 2D array of numbers, it'd be with that. And if the query number nine, which is right there, is in there, it'll say found it. It's another way of doing it. This way doesn't, um, well, does use the found stuff here. We'll change that to found equals true. So we're using it. And you'll see it, it does work. All right, let's see. Lastly, um, if you know matrices, you can use this like a matrix. Uh, we don't, I don't believe your math classes go too deep into them. From what I remember when I was in school and from at least the last time I looked at any of the math standards for FSA, I don't believe that we did use it. I'm going to take out this comma. These commas can be left, but I prefer, I prefer not to have them in there because I like having the last element not having a comma because it doesn't really make sense to have one. And if you know matrix multiplication, that, uh, that file on eCampus contains actually how to do it. And that's about it, really, for 2D arrays. Thanks for watching.